Hello, and welcome to Best Practices Enhancing Transition of Care Communication. My name is Shali Alandri, and I'm a PGY1 Community Pharmacy Resident at Fraydard and the Medical College of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This webinar is designed to describe the importance of seamless discharge medication handoff from the hospital to the community setting. The recommended components of a prescription discharge handoff tool will be highlighted to streamline communication between hospital and community pharmacies. Experiences and valuable lessons from a discharge communication pilot will also be introduced during this webinar. Those viewing this webinar program will be eligible to receive 0.5 hour of continuing education credit for this activity. CE will be granted to those individuals that view this webinar, complete the learning assessment questions on the course web page, complete the evaluation, and select claim credit online. CE will be uploaded into participants' CPE monitor portals within 60 days of claiming credit if a CPE, CPE monitor ID and birth date in month date format are provided. Questions about CE credit should be directed to the PSW office. I will be presenting this webinar along with Jennifer Dippel, a PGY1 Community Pharmacy resident at Aurora St. Luke's Medical Center. Jennifer and myself do not have anything to disclose through this presentation. The objectives for this presentation are to summarize the importance of pharmacist discharge handoff communication, explain how each section of the discharge summary can be used to streamline transition of care, and to identify different methods to communicate the pharmacist discharge handoff. Transition of care is defined as the movement of a patient from one care setting to another. This movement can be to or from a hospital, to or from an ambulatory care practice, to or from a skilled nursing facility, to or from hospice. Those listed on the slide are just a few examples of the patient care setting. There can be many more patient care settings involved in transition of care. This webinar will focus on the transition of care from the hospital to the home. Transition of care also refers to the movement from one, one healthcare provider to another. Transition of care is a set of actions designed to ensure coordination and continuity. The goals of transition of care are to prevent drug-related adverse events, to reduce readmission rates, and healthcare-related costs. Hospital discharge can be a complex transition of care process. A patient's hospitalization may consist of health status changes and medication modifications according to the patient's condition. At discharge, communication between various healthcare providers is essential to complete discharge medication reconciliation in order to address any changes made throughout the hospitalization. Factors that may limit the patient's level of understanding such as language barriers and health literacy concerns can discharge can make discharge the from the hospital even more complicated. Hence, many different activities are taking place among the healthcare providers and the patient at the time of discharge that the community pharmacy can play a very important role in this transition of care. Pharmacists, residents, pharmacy technicians, and pharmacy students can play a vital role in this transition of care. Community pharmacies can take an active role in the transition of care process by using a discharge tool to assist in discharge medication consultation. The pharmacist discharge handoff communication tool is a method of communication to help communicate discharge information from the hospital pharmacy to the community pharmacy. This discharge tool offers important hospital discharge information, such as the reason for hospitalization, medication changes that occur during this hospitalization, updates to allergy, and much more. This pharmacist discharge handoff communication tool 
can be sent to the dispensing community pharmacy using fax, electronic, or hyperlink transmission, or can be forwarded from the patient. This webinar will provide an example of a pharmacist discharge handoff communication template. The template included within this webinar is an example that can be adjusted according to each institution's electronic health record. Communication with your information technology IT department will be essential to develop an appropriate template for your institution. When developing your template, consider including specific sections as outlined in this webinar to communicate patient-specific information from the hospital to the community pharmacy. Overall, various institutions can have the document formatted in different ways, but should contain the similar information. Hence, community pharmacists might see various forms of this type of template, but will include similar sections as those found in the template included within this webinar. Now let's start discussing this pharmacist discharge handoff communication template section by section in the next few slides. The first section of the pharmacist discharge handoff communication will include the patient's general information. This section contains the hospital name and address to let the community pharmacy know which institution the patient was discharged from. It also contains the patient's name and date of birth for patient identification purposes. This section includes the patient's admission and discharge date. If the duration of hospitalization is only, it can give an idea of the severity of patient's condition. It provides prescription insurance information, which can be helpful in processing the patient's prescriptions. The name of the discharging physician is also included which can be used to contact the provider for any questions with the patient's discharge, discharge prescriptions. If that provide, it provides the patient's primary care provider name and phone number, so the community pharmacy can contact the patient's primary care physician if necessary. The hospital pharmacy contact information is also included, which can be used as another source if questions regarding discharge medications come up. The next section of the pharmacist discharge handoff communication tool provides information of the patient's primary problem, problem related to hospitalization. This section includes the main reason as to why the patient was hospitalized. Mr. Jones' primary problem for hospitalization was SC segment elevation myocardial infarction STEMI. This section also provides information regarding the patient's past medical history and what events occurred throughout the patient's hospitalization. You can also use this information to conduct a medication reconciliation to avoid omissions and gaps in therapy by pairing the patient's medications to their medical conditions. The next section of the pharmacist discharge handoff communication tool includes detailed information about the patient's discharge medication list. As you can see from the slide, the discharge medication list is divided into four main sections. The first section, start taking this medication. The second section, continue this medications which have changed. The third section, continue this medications which have not changed and the fourth section, stop taking this medication. The table is divided into three columns, which provides you with the medication name, details such as dosing instructions and indication, and when the patient's last inpatient dose was given. The first column will provide the medication name, strength, and dosage form of the medication. The middle column provides certain details about the medications that should be used to counsel the patient thoroughly about their medication. The last column contains information about the patient's last inpatient dose to emphasize when the patient's next dose is due. For example, if the patient is supposed to take a medication twice daily, and if the last inpatient dose was this morning, then the patient should be counseled that he or she will need to take their next dose of the medication 
after when they arrive at home or in the evening. The discharge medication list section is the most important section of this pharmacist discharge handoff communication template. The community pharmacists can more efficiently conduct a medication reconciliation from this discharge information and appropriately contact the discharging provider for any necessary modifications to the patient's discharge medications. As previously mentioned, this discharge medication section contains four parts which will be described in the next four slides. The first portion of the discharge medication list includes a list of new medications that were started for the patient during their hospitalization. The details section includes information regarding the medication's directions and how the patient should be taking this medication. It also provides information as to why the patient is taking this medication. For example, Mr. Jones was started on aspirin 81 milligram, one tablet daily, to prevent blood clots and heart stent and for heart health. Hence, the community pharmacist can use the section for medication indication and dosing instructions. The last inpatient dose, as discussed earlier, is also highlighted in the section to assist in acknowledging when the patient should take the next dose. The continue this medication which have changed that section is the second part of the discharge medication list. This section will provide information about medication that the patient was taking prior to hospital, hospital admission but have been modified during their hospitalization. The details column also provides dosing instructions and indication along with information as to why the change in medication occurred. For the example on the slide, a torvastatin dose was increased to 80 mg to decrease cholesterol levels. The community pharmacy should use this section to deactivate any previous medication with previous directions of these changed medication that may be active in the system. The continue this medications which have not changed section, the third portion of the discharge medication list provides information about medications that the patient was taking prior to admission and emphasizes that the patient should continue taking this medications as they were taking prior to the hospital admission. Some of the last sections, the section also includes the appropriate dosing instruction, indication, and last inpatient dose. The stop taking this medication section is the fourth portion of the discharge medication list. This section provides a list of medications that the patient was taking prior to hospitalization that the discharging physician wants the patient to stop taking. The detailed section provides information on the reasons as to why this medication is being discontinued. It also provides information as to what other medication should be awarded by the patient. For example, in this slide, naproxen was discontinued for Mr. Jones as it can increase his bleeding risk while taking warfarin concomitantly. Mr. Jones should also avoid taking ibuprofen. If Mr. Jones needs to take an over-the-counter medication for minor pain or fever, he should take Tylenol. The community pharmacist should use this information to appropriately counsel patients upon discharge from the hospital. The community pharmacy should also use this section to deactivate any medications that may be active within the patient's prescription profile in the pharmacy system. The next section in the pharmacist's discharge handoff communication template after the patient's discharge medication list includes the allergy section. This section lists any allergies or intolerances that the patient disclosed upon admission or that were experienced throughout their hospitalization. This section includes the specific allergen and the type of reaction to the allergen. The community pharmacy should use this information 
to update allergy information within the patient's prescription profile in the pharmacy system. This will help identify potential allergies and intolerances associated with the patient's medication. The next section includes the patient's laboratory data. Please pay, pay close attention to the date associated with the laboratory values listed. The lab values may not be the most recent set of labs drawn. Hence, caution should be used as to how this laboratory data is utilized. However, as many medications require frequent lab monitoring, reviewing the patient's lab values can be helpful to determine if the patient's medications and dosages are appropriate. For example, in this case, the patient's cholesterol is 225 milligram per deciliter, which is considered high. If you remember from the previous slides, the patient's atorvastatin dose was increased, and hence the change made to the patient's cholesterol medication dose was appropriate. If there is a discrepancy found in the medication list according to the patient's lab value, the community pharmacy can contact the hospital pharmacy to discuss potential changes in therapy. The vital signs and social history section of the pharmacist's discharge handoff communication template provides information such as height, weight, and tobacco use. This information can be useful to determine creatinine clearance, ideal body weight, or adjusted body weight to appropriately calculate medication doses. Hence, this section may be helpful to evaluate whether the patient's medications and doses are appropriate based upon their kidney function and body weight. Also, if it is noticed that the patient is a current smoker and there are not any smoking cessation medications listed on patient's medication list, appropriate smoking cessation counseling can be provided to the patient. This section of the pharmacist discharge high enough communication template provides important details regarding the patient's upcoming appointments. During patient counseling, this section should be pointed out to remind your patient about the importance of keeping all of their scheduled follow-up appointments and lab work. If there are any missing appointments with any primary care physician, a specialty care provider that you notice, advise the patient to contact the provider to schedule those appointments. Follow-up appointments are an important aspect of transition of care as the care is being coordinated from the hospital to the community pharmacy as well as from the hospital to the patient's primary care physician or specialty care provider. I will now pass along the next section of this webinar presentation to Jennifer, who will be discussing the experiences and lessons learned from a discharge communication pilot that took place at a local Wisconsin hospital. Shally. During this section, I will be discussing some background information on a discharge communication pilot, followed by the workflow involved within the pilot, along with what barriers were introduced, and then concluding with a discussion on lessons that were learned from starting this discharge communication pilot. Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital in Marshfield, Wisconsin is a 500-bed tertiary care teaching institution. Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital completed a discharge communication template pilot to enhance transition of care and streamline patient care from the hospital to the community setting. The Pharmacy Society of Wisconsin Pharmacy Practice Model Initiative Committee would like to give a special thank you to Stephanie Haverfield, the Transitional Care Specialist for Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital. Stephanie provided us with some information on the Transition of Care Discharge, discharge Pilot that took place at Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital. The Transition of Care Discharge Pilot ran for six weeks starting in August of 2013 at Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital. The target patient population included within this pilot consisted of transitional care, transitional care patients that were found to have factors placing them at high risk for hospital readmission. The transitional care team chose two nursing units, 
both a cardiac unit and a general medicine unit to conduct their discharge communication pilot. Now before the pilot began, a discharge template was created to help streamline patient care from the hospital to the community. Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital developed a team consisting of representatives from home health, nursing homes, community-based facilities, clinic nurses, and one pharmacist to discuss what information they felt would be beneficial in the transition of care discharge template. The transition of care discharge pilot was run by one transitional care specialist. During the pilot, the transitional care specialist specialist would manually enter patient information into a paper discharge template. The template that was used at Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital was not found within their electronic health record system. When the template was completed, the transitional care specialist would contact the community facility, whether it was the pharmacy, a nursing home, or a rehab, for, rehab facility, to obtain their fax number and would inform that facility that they would be receiving, a dis, they would be receiving discharge information from Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital. The transition of care team that created the discharge template felt that only the discharge location, such as a nursing home, home health, or a rehab facility, were the only locations that needed the discharge template because the information included within the template related closer to patient care within the home setting. So the template that was manually entered by the transitional care specialist was then faxed to the discharge location. The team also felt that the patient's discharge dispensing pharmacy only needed the discharge medication reconciliation list along with a section for handwritten notes. The discharge medication reconciliation list was faxed to the patient's discharge dispensing pharmacy to communicate any changes that were made to the patient's medication list along with any special notes that needed to be communicated upon discharge and the manually entered template was not actually sent to the patient's dispensing pharmacy just to a rehab facility, a nursing home facility, um, or home health. There were some barriers that developed in the process of the pilot at Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital. One of the largest barriers from the transitional care discharge communication pilot included the need to manually enter patient information into the paper template. They believe that an ideal method would include an auto-generated template to easily incorporate all of the necessary information to be communicated upon discharge. Another barrier from this pilot included the lack of knowledge among other health disciplines in regards to the transition of care specialist position and her responsibilities, along with what the role was of the transition of care discharge communication template that was being faxed or sent to um, the community setting. Many disciplines, including physicians, are not aware of the transition of care, transitional care specialist scope and responsibilities. So, what was learned from completing this pilot? Prior to this pilot, pharmacies were not receiving hospital discharge information and did not have access to a patient's discharge medication list. According to the transitional care specialist at Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital, some lessons that were learned from this pilot included the high level of appreciation from pharmacies that were receiving the discharge information. They appreciate receiving the patient's completed discharge medication list and knowing the barriers that were dealt with during the patient's hospitalization. And some examples include whether the patient refused home health services, whether the patient refused any PT or OT physical therapy or occupational therapy, and whether the patient understood their medications or not upon discharge. They also appreciated special instructions that were noted throughout the hospitalization. For instance, whether the patient, if the patient likes to take their medications with chocolate pudding, or if the patient prefers to take their medications at a certain time each day. 
Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital obtained feedback from the receiving facilities that the information that was faxed upon discharge was actually helpful. Many facilities stated that the template was helpful because the information on the template is from and about the patient, not just a physician's point of view on the patient's health. And this really does show the collaboration that we're really trying to enhance through transitions of care. The transitional care specialist at Ministry St. Joseph's Hospital is still currently utilizing the discharge template to communicate discharge information to the patient's community facilities. She continues to manually enter all of the necessary discharge information for patients using in the same cardiac and general medicine unit that were utilized within the pilot. So concluding for the, for the webinar today, community pharmacies can really play a vital role in the transition of care process. The pharmacist discharge handoff communication template allows community pharmacies to conduct medication reconciliation. It allows the pharmacies to collaborate with, with providers for necessary medication modifications. It provides patient-centered prescription consultation and it enhances the successful transition of care for the patient. So it's important to keep in mind that community pharmacy can improve the lives of our patients through this transition of care involvement. By participating in this pharmacy discharge handoff communication, you can be a part of this transition of care web as shown on the slide and make a difference in your patient's health by simply co collaborating with all of those involved with the, pa with the patient's transition of, car transition of care discharge handoff. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about how you can become an active member in transition of care for your patients. This webinar was made just for you by the Pharmacy Society of Wisconsin Pharmacy Practice Model Initiative Committee.